and welcome in this rapid overview of advanced collective transform tools. This is a set of tools allowing you to translate, rotate or scale collectively, simultaneously, all together if you prefer, several props or figures in your scene, either using the viewport transforms, okay, the universal, the rotate, translate, scale tool usually located in your top menu, or using dials in a dedicated interface okay, uh, with advanced possibilities. You can use these scripts directly from your smart content or content manager, or you can install the shortcuts in the menu using the installer script this way, okay, and so that they can be used either as custom actions here or by clicking on the icons on the, in, in the top menu. When you don't need them, you just have, have to hide the toolbar, okay? And you can show them again uh, whenever you want. The scripts included are the following ones. First, here you can open the PDF documentation, but you can also find it in the readme. Here you can install and remove uh, the menus in the toolbar. Here, using these two scripts, you can activate and deactivate the collective transforms using the viewport tools. And this script allows you to uh, switch between uh, one state or another, but you can of course use this too, or use this to switch simply. Uh, here you have the use advanced collective transforms, which allow you to dial your transforms and you have advanced features that I will uh, present later on. Here you have a drop to floor or move to floor because if it's underneath the floor, it will move them up to the floor. So uh, it's the move to floor, but it's an advanced version of move to floor. Why advanced? Because it will move every uh, figure or props to the floor, even if they are parented to something. And this is not presently the case when you use the Studio default move to floor function. So it really moves everything to floor. And finally, we have the um, zero pass by transfer type, okay? Uh, and you will be able to zero separately the translation, the rotation, or the scale of all the selected elements. And even more, you will be able to determine if those elements are parented to something, if they are zeroed relatively to their parents, or if they are zeroed absolutely, okay, in the space. So now let's have a look at the viewport collective transform. You always know if it's activated or not. When there is a cross like this, it's not activated, okay? You can click this or you can double click here, okay, to activate it. Now they are activated. It means that if you select several objects, okay, and you use the transform tools, the usual ones, okay, they will be all um, transformed together. So here I translated them, okay, here I can rotate them, oh, I can rotate them this way, for instance, okay, and of course I can scale them any, along in any axis, okay, uh, or scale them globally too. Uh, and if you um, deactivate, okay, using this or using this, then this time if I move, only one of them is moved, and in, in general it's the last one selected. When you want to use the advanced collective transforms, okay, uh, then you have to select the elements that you want to, to move or rotate uh, collectively, and uh, you double click on this script. You have a note that you can disable forever if you want to, and here you have the interface opening. So let's have a look at the translate. Here you see 000, zero, zero. it's normal because it's going, you are going to translate relatively to this inici initial position. So here you see I can translate in all the directions, okay? And uh, what's interesting here is that I can change the sensitivity. So I can put a very low sensitivity so to have very slight movements and a big one so that this time when I move, it moves a lot. It, it's helpful with things with big environments so that you can move on long distances when you want to. Okay, you can at any time reset the sensitivity and you can reset the initial location. Let's have a look at the rotate. 
uh, that's in the rotate that there's some many interesting things. First, you can rotate elements individually. Okay, so here the terrace rotates too, but we don't we don't see it <laughs> because it's uh, it's symmetrical ar around its rotation axis. But you can rotate the elements, okay, around their original uh, uh, their uh, their own origins, each around their own origins. But you can ch change this, okay. You can choose to rotate it around the group rotation. So this time it behaves as a group, okay. And when you rotate, you rotate around the, the point that you see here, which is the median point, the median point, yes, of all the selected elements. But even more fun, okay, you can um, you can change the group origin. Okay, for instance, and can select this cube as the new origin. And now, when I rotate the group, it rotates around the cube. And it's very interesting when you have a scene and yet you want elements to rotate around a figure or a given object. All right. Um, the same thing for the scale. Here, you have a group scale around the origin. So. If you want to come back to the or to the normal origin, you have to select the group itself, okay, as the elements, okay, that you want to rotate or scale around, okay. Here is the origin of the group, and here I have the group scale, and I can choose to have a scale around individual origins. So this time the objects scale. But the, the group does not scale. The group of object does not scale. Okay. Uh, well, and when uh, when you close um, when you close the interface, you have two two choices. You can choose to reparent all item and close script. Okay, because parent ob objects are basically unparented to be reparented to the trust to a transform group, or you can just um, click here. And then you keep the group and you keep the, the new origin you might have given to the group. Okay, so this way, for instance, I'm going to close without reparenting. Okay, and I, and I select this cube as the new origin. And if you go in the, in the viewport, you see that you have a group that you can rotate okay, around the node you want. Uh, I, pr I prefer I prefer using parameters. Okay. And uh, well, that's that's mainly what I wanted to say for the transform tool is that you can um, keep the group or not at the end. Uh, let's undo this. Okay. Um, undo. Okay. We have our initial position. If I use it, okay. And I rotate them individually, then globally, then around the group origin. Okay. Okay. And scale it around the group origin so that they get closer, you see, to the group origin. They scale relatively to this point. Okay. And I can close the script this way. And the collective transform tools disappear. The, the collective transform group, sorry, disappears, and you have your object placed the way you want. So you keep this group for a later usage uh, of it, or you can uh, click uh, click on the button to close and reparent to 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 come back to the origin pa to the original parents of each object, um, and no parent, of course, if the objects were initially unparented. Okay, let's have a look at an example of usage, uh, for instance. So there are, there are not plenty of objects, but there, there could be plenty of objects, okay. Um, here is Genesis 8 figure in a place called DLA, all right. And the issue that I have is that if I uh, begin to rotate, okay, DLA, uh, Genesis, for instance, falls in the buildings or thing like that. Um, and that's not what I want. I want uh, to be able to rotate the alley around my figure. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the um, 
advanced collective transform group select dla only okay everything is grouped under dla so that's that's great and i'm gonna immediately uh, change my group origin for genesis 8 mail and now when i rotate you see you see genesis 8 mail remains at the same location in the streets and the camera goes in the building but genesis 8 remains at the same place you can take as a reference the the, the spot here in front of his uh, in front of his feet and uh, if i want to play uh, a little bit more uh, later on with this group i just close using the cross here okay and the la is now parented to a collective transform group which origin is on the middle of the bounding box of Genesis 8. So uh, if I select the collective transform group, I can keep on playing with this, okay, in, in, uh, in my scene. Okay, so... Okay, another thing uh, which can be done, so we have to set the rotation to zero first. Uh, it's to make a symmetry, okay, uh, on the x-axis for the LA, so you see. If I put a less 100% x scale, I have the symmetrical version on the street um, relatively to uh, Genesis 8. But for this, you have a, you need to have a zero rotation first, and then afterwards you can rotate. So of course the writings are under are, the, are are symmetrical too. Now let's go on with the drop out of floor tool, tool, which is also the move out of floor tool, because if it's underneath the ground, uh, it will be raised up. And um, here, for instance, I have the torus, which is parented to the cube, the blue cube, which is uh, parented to the cone. So in general, what's happening is that if you drop to floor, okay, as soon as the lower child has, uh, has reached the floor, the parent stopped, stops dropping, okay? So maybe that's not what you want. So I, here I use the keyboard shortcut for to drop to floor. Uh, what, what, you, what you can do here is really drop uh, elements to floor, okay? So this time the cone was dropped to floor and the cube was dropped to floor, okay? And of course the children here of the, of the cone have gone below the floor because they are the children and they keep the, they keep the same relative position. So it's because I um, it's because I selected only the cone and the cube. Now, if I want everything to drop to floor, I just select everything, and this time I will be able to drop everything to floor. Okay. Now let's have a look at the zero tool that you can see here, that you will also find here, all right? Because I'm going to go to the parameters to see the transform. So he, here's the base plane, okay, that I put in the scene to have a reference. The zero, we see it's here. It's the absolute zero of the scene, okay? And the cone is not on this zero. So I, if I want to place it on this zero, I click here, and I click on zero translation dials, okay? And it puts it on zero. Okay, because the translation dials come, came to zero. Uh, I think there is no rotation, but uh, yeah, see, there is a small rotation. So he's here, it has a Y rotation that, ca that I can zero if I want to. All right, and the children, you, we see that the rotation changed because the children move. They took the rotation of, the, of their parents, okay? And you can 100% the scale of it, okay? and the children follow the, follow the par parent scale. Okay, that's that's the base, okay? Uh, so these are for the dials. Now, uh, it's interesting because um, you can do more things when you have uh, children parented to a node. I'm gonna undo this and show you. So now let's have a look at the same scene, okay? Uh, here the torus is parented to the cube, which is parented to the cone. I select the torus just to show you, and I'm gonna use the zero. So if I zero the translation dials, okay, here we have zero, necessarily the torus will be placed on the cube, which is his parent. But okay, also if I want zero the absolute location or the translation dials, you see, okay, this way it's it's zero zeroed relatively to the parent, and this way it's zeroed absolutely in the scene. It's the same for the rotation. 
okay? The rotation here becomes zero, so it has the same rotation as its parent, okay? But I can zero the absolute rotations, and we will see it better this way. You see here, it's the absolute zero rotation in the scene, okay? With, with the angle, we didn't see well. And for the scale, it is the same. You can, you can um, zero, normalize your scale relatively to the parent or absolutely in the scene. Well, that's all for uh, the zero tool. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. If you have questions, feel free to contact me directly on DAS forums. Bye bye.